Hey guys, uh, Nathaniel here. Uh, let's let's get this started. Okay, we're doing other regression plots. So we're going to be plotting the residuals, uh, the coefficients, and then doing an interaction plot, uh, which I've personally not used, but uh, at least I'll show you how it generally works. Uh, so to start off with, we're going with residual plot. So resid plot. Uh, again, it works very similar to LM plot. You go ahead, you specify the models in your linear regression, specify the data, and then it plots the residuals. So you get to see these residuals. Uh, if you're doing a linear regression, you're hoping that the residuals are normally distributed. That's, that's the hope. Um, you can plot a LOAS on the residuals themselves to see if there's any general trend uh, to the residuals. In this case, it looks fairly random. Um, that, yeah, fairly random with, with generally a mean zero. Um, again, you might, you, you might expect that a, a simple linear regression might not work exactly because we had a long tail previously in the, um, uh, in the, uh, distribution of total bill, which is our um, uh, dependent variable, and generally you want to have uh, independent variables that, or dependent variables that are normally distributed. That's kind of like one of the foundations here. Okay, but anyways, that's one of the things that you can do. This would this would tell you that there there seems to be um, a little bit of non-zero uh, distribution of residuals around the tails, um, and that, that that could right. Don't need to go into that. That's what it might tell you. Um, another way that you might do this, uh, so let's go ahead and do a residual plot for this data. So this is our order two data. We notice we have very large residuals. There's a, a, a striking um, pattern to them. Uh, so you can do all the classic stuff. You can give this an order. So we do a second order and we get very small residuals. There's still a pattern. Um, in this third order plot, again, we had this problem with having this um, this point here, having a very large residual, if you put a robust equal to true, you can you can do the exact same thing. So again, these points are, are really right on the line. This one is just uh, an outlier. Um, so that's the residual plot. Uh, it is fairly useful generally if you're doing a, or using a linear regression to do anything you want to be doing that um, at the end, just to make sure that these things are normally distributed. It might suggest a transformation to your data that would help. Um, so the next thing is the coefficient plot. So this is plotting coefficients of a linear regression. Uh, notice we're back to the old familiar kind of uh, R notation or to, to specify these formula. So your dependent variable tilde all of your independent variables. You can make a, an independent variable a categorical variable just with a C, uh, this independent variable, uh, your data source. You also have this, which is a, whether to train the intercept or not. And then finally, the confidence interval that's going to be displayed around these. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm not sure whether the confidence interval is done via bootstrapping or via an MLE. So I can, I can look at that and figure that out for you. Um, but here you go. It plots these things. There's a final thing here. So this, this, these two plots aren't really explained too well. There's no documentation on how to use them. Um, but So this, this might be exceptionally helpful. Uh, just because this is great documentation on how to use them. Um, so here, basically what you're doing is you're grouping by smoker. Um, so down here, smoker, yes or no. Um, and then you're looking at the coefficients to all of these things. Coefficients to the intercepts, coefficients to the days, and then coefficients to the total bill. Uh, so in interestingly enough, if people are smokers, perhaps there doesn't need to be an intercept. Perhaps there's no baseline tip is what that means. Okay. And then finally, the final other regression plot that we're going to show off is the um, <clears throat> interact plot. This is specifically useful when trying to see the interaction between two uh, independent variables. So in this case, x1 and x2. Um, I made x1 and x2 have an interaction, which is b3. Um, so uh, x1 times x2 times b3 uh, will get added onto uh, y plus some random noise. And you'll notice this. Um, if x1 uh, is positive and x2 is negative, then we slowly get into the more, more negative side down here. Um, if x1 is positive and x2 is positive, we get into the positive side. So this can be a good tool for visualizing interactions. Um, I've never actually used this one. Uh, this, this one has not been sort of a big thing. Co coefficient plot, that's super nice. Uh, when I go ahead and do some tutorials on stats models, you'll see that uh, stats models does a pretty good job itself. 
of displaying these sorts of things, and I like the way that they've spit it out better. Uh, the residual plot, though, is super nice, super useful. Um, if, if I weren't going to do the other two, I would just show you the residual plot because this is incredibly useful. Um, okay, so those, those are the plots that you want to be doing uh, anytime you're doing a, a linear regression, anytime you're doing uh, that sort of thing. Okay, guys, uh, thanks so much. Um, I'll see you guys next time.